Today's scripture reading is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 36 to 53. Let's read all together. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubt rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witness of these things. I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and stayed continually at the temple, praising God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Let us come before the Lord in prayer this morning. Lord, we want to thank you, Lord, that we can come to your word. And Lord, even as we study your word, may you grant us your understanding. In Jesus' name. Amen. Dear friends, the message today is entitled, There are no shortcuts to understand scripture. The scripture reading was brought to us just now from Luke chapter 24, verses 36 to 53. We live in a world where we have shortcuts, even on our mobile phone, uh, we have a function that is called shortcuts. Let me just play a short quiz with you this morning, uh, like an introduction. I'll be asking you four questions and you have to respond for each question. Number one means you strongly disagree. Number two means you disagree. Number three means you're not sure. Number four means you agree. And number five means you strongly agree. Let's see how you do. First question. The happiest ones in pastor's home when the MCO kept on being extended are pastor's mother and pastor's pet dog. Right. What is your response? Let's see by a show of hands. Second question. Pastor is waiting for the barber shop to be open so that he can go and get his hair cut. What's your response from 1 to 5? Third question. The Bible should be read in larger chunks to get an overall grasp of the context, but also in smaller segments so as to study God's Word and study the phrases. But more importantly, to ask God to help us to apply the truth for our daily living. Again, what is your response? One means strongly disagree and five means strongly agree. 
The last question is this. When we say that we have no time to read the Bible, even during MCO, what we are really telling God is that reading and studying the Bible is of very low priority in my life. Again, what is your response? Now, to me, all the questions, the responses should be five that I strongly agree. Background is also important uh, in the proclamation of God's Word, particularly as we look at this passage that is a post-resurrection passage. Just to quickly illustrate this, Matthew chapter 28, the last chapter, ends with the Great Commission. Mark's Gospel chapter 16, if we take the shorter ending, we find that it ends uh, attesting to the resurrection of Jesus, but they were filled with bewilderment. And in John's Gospel, if we look at chapters 20 and 21, we find that Jesus appears to his disciples behind locked doors, and finally Jesus appears to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. That beautiful passage that talks about Jesus extending his love, his forgiveness, and restoration of the disciples, particularly to Peter. How about Luke's Gospel? And today we are looking at Luke chapter 24, which is the last chapter. We find very quickly that the women were the first witnesses to the resurrection of Jesus. They came running back to tell the apostles. Peter hurries back to the empty tomb, only to find it empty and to see the linen there. But Peter did not see uh, the two angels. Then we also find that uh, a peculiar story to Luke's Gospel, uh, only recorded here, where there were two disciples walking on the road to Emmaus and suddenly uh, Jesus uh, appears to them, walks beside them. And Jesus is not recognized by them. But Jesus intently listens to what is upon their heart. And that is very pastoral. And we should also follow the example of Jesus to listen to other people and see what is upon their heart. Jesus accepts the invitation to stay on uh, for the evening as it was uh, getting later. And then we find that Jesus actually breaks the bread. And at that moment, the two disciples recognize Jesus for who he is. And then Jesus vanishes from the scene. But they were so excited that they went all the way back to Jerusalem and they met up with the other disciples and they started to bear witness that they had indeed encountered the risen Saviour. The focus for today is this. Jesus is patiently opening the minds of his first disciples to Scripture. And thus, we, his disciples today, should stop making excuses to read and study God's Word. God is patiently waiting to teach us. Let us say yes to Him. Let me repeat. Jesus patiently opened the minds of His first disciples to the Scriptures. Thus, we as His disciples should stop making excuses to read and to study God's Word. God is patiently waiting to teach us. Let us say yes to Him today. The first main point for today is this. There were no shortcuts. Luke took time to explain to Theophilus the certainty of Jesus' life and mission. Now, you may be wondering, where does this Theophilus appear? In fact, if you turn back to Luke chapter 1, verses 1 to 4, Luke explains the purpose of writing. Not only Luke, but Luke and Acts. Theophilus, literally in the New Testament Greek, means the lover of God. 
We do not quite know who this person is, but we know that he is a student of God's Word, a person who wants to learn more about Jesus and how Jesus is indeed the fulfillment of the Messiah promised in the Old Testament. And then also to know the mission of Jesus that is the early church. We find that Luke writes uh, both volumes and even today in our Form 5 syllabus there is Bible knowledge and uh, that is a good exam to get our uh, children to take up and to do that exam. Luke used eyewitnesses for example like Mary and Peter and in the book of Acts uh, Paul the Apostle. Why did Luke do this? Because Luke wanted to make sure that whatever Theophilus had learned, these are authentic, these are verified. And indeed, um, in today's world of the social media, we have so much uh, fake news that is floating around. Some are really fake, some have half-truths in it, and some are indeed true. And I know there's this one cell group leader that I usually uh, ask him, you know, is this true or not? Like, for example, Prime Minister is going to make an announcement. And I know whatever he says is true. And sometimes if he doesn't know, he will just say, I'm not quite sure. And we need to be careful about the news that we transmit to others today. Next, we find that Luke took 52 chapters, both in the book of Acts as well as Luke. 24 in Luke and 28 in Acts to actually explain to Theophilus what had happened. Luke used Polish Greek and um, it's interesting that uh, today we have Bible scholars, uh, two that I mentioned last Sunday, uh, Dr. David Pawson and Dr. Ravi Zacharias, both have gone home to be with the Lord. But if you hear their teaching and preaching, you know that they use a very good English to communicate the truth of God. Luke was very observant. He uh, particularly noticed details. He was also very sensitive to the work and movement of the Holy Spirit. Now, next point is that Luke ends his gospel, that is today's passage, with strength. He tells us that Jesus came and appeared to his disciples and he showed proofs that he's indeed alive and then he took them to Bethany he ascended and then the disciples came back to Jerusalem uh, they were joyful and they continually went to the temple to praise God now we may ask the question why this ending why did Luke end with strength and a future hope and I think it's important for us in today's world, we as pastors and leaders and uh, ministers uh, of Christ, that we too give our people a message of strength and a message of hope. Let me try to answer this question. Why this ending in Luke chapter 24? Firstly, the women were the eyewitnesses. And again, like in Mark's gospel, we find credibility because in those days, the, the testimony of women were disregarded in the court. So if really they were the eyewitnesses, then it shows that these things really happened. And they were the first eyewitnesses. The apostles did not believe what they said. In fact, in Luke chapter 24, verse 11, the Bible says that they thought it was idle talk and did not believe. Secondly, we find on the road to Emmaus that the disciples, once they recognized that Jesus is indeed alive, they hurried back to Jerusalem, although probably it was late in the evening or at night, and they wanted to do so to bear witness to the eleven who were there. And that is in verse 36. And then we find that Jesus appears to the disciples. And Jesus proved to them that he had bodily resurrected from the dead. And we see this because they, 
they disbelieved. In fact, they thought he was a ghost. And then Jesus explained to them that a ghost uh, cannot eat. A ghost does not have flesh and bone. But it's interesting to note also that Jesus vanished uh, after the incident with the two on the road to Emmaus. And then suddenly he appeared to his disciples. Now John in the parallel uh, story in John chapter 20 verse 19, it mentions that the disciples were behind locked doors. And so there was something also special about Jesus. As I mentioned earlier, Jesus had hands and feet. He had a mouth as well, a mouth to be able to eat the broad fish. And this is in verses 40 to 43. The Bible says, yet they disbelieved in verse 40. And thus Jesus went on to open up their minds and explain to them the whole of the Old Testament. Now it's interesting that Luke mentions three major sections of the Old Testament. The Law of Moses, the first five books as we call the Pentateuch, the Prophets and the Psalms. By the time that Jesus came into this world, 2,000 years ago, we find that the whole of the Old Testament was already compiled and accepted as authoritative by the Jewish authorities. Now what is really interesting is that in the year 1947, we find that there was an interesting incident that took place. Now I'm telling this because not many people uh, know this story and it ties in to the authenticity of the transmission of scriptures. We find in 1947, uh, there was a Bedouin a shepherd boy and he had lost a little goat and he threw a stone in a cave in Qumran uh, that's near the Dead Sea and lo and behold he heard uh, the noise of pottery cracking and he went inside and he discovered actually inside the uh, pottery or large jars of clay there were scrolls to cut the long story short, uh, he got the authorities to come, they bought these scrolls, they analysed and studied these scrolls. Now what is amazing of what we call the Dead Sea Scrolls is that there were many, many writings stored in uh, jars of clay preserved so that um, they will not decay uh, over the ages. And these writings uh, took place even a hundred years before Jesus came into this world, roughly about 2,000 years ago or more than that. Now prior to that, the earliest Old Testament script or manuscript was only a thousand years ago. Now scholars got very excited because they wanted to see what they discovered at the caves in Qumran that is a thousand years earlier than the earliest manuscripts that we have and see how accurate the scriptures are or the scribes were in uh, writing down the scriptures. So just imagine the Qumran scrolls were written about 2000 years ago. The earliest texts that we have we call the Masoretic texts. They were written about a thousand years ago. So there's a gap of about a thousand years between the Qumran scrolls and the Masoretic texts. Now, when the uh, Bible experts, experts in Hebrew language studied, they found that two scrolls containing the entire book of Isaiah in Qumran, 95% of it was identically transmitted down a thousand years, except for 5% that was attributed to the slip of the pen or what today we call as typo. Now, you may not be very excited about this, but as a student of God's Word, as Bible scholars uh, found out this discovery, they praise and thank God for preserving the Scriptures, the Old Testament Scriptures, with authenticity over a thousand years. So what I'm saying is that the Scriptures were already uh, authoritative by the time of Jesus. Finally, we find in um, the last few verses in Luke 24, 
the mention of Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is implicit because Jesus said, you know, he will, the Father will, will send uh, power upon them and the power of the Holy Spirit and they are to wait in Jerusalem. Now that is an uh, indication of the Holy Trinity, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And finally, they were joyful in Jerusalem. They were anticipating greater things. Now, the next main point is this. There are no shortcuts today. Understanding the Bible is vital for carrying out God's mission. Jesus had plenty of time to explain the Old Testament to his disciples, as described in verses 44 to 49. We find that in today's passage, the uh, occurrence happened either on uh, Easter Sunday night or maybe Monday morning. Because the two on the road to Emmaus, they came back immediately to Jerusalem. What were the stories that Jesus shared with his disciples regarding himself in the Old Testament? It is not recorded, but I'm just making a guess. He probably could have shared about um, Genesis chapter 3, where God uh, curses uh, the woman, curses the serpent, curses the ground. And, the, and God gives hope to us because he said that there will be enmity between the offspring of the serpent and the offspring of the woman. And he will crush your head and you will strike his heel. And we know that this indeed is a prophecy that Jesus died on the cross, but the ultimate victory belonged to Jesus. Then Jesus could have also spoken of Genesis 12, uh, God's blessing to Abraham that he will bless all the nations of the earth. Genesis 22, when Abraham took his son Isaac to Mount Moriah and offered a sacrifice, and finally God provided the ram and Dr. David Paulson, who passed away recently, he mentions that the ram is actually a one-year-old sheep, not a little gentle ram. And Isaac was probably about 30 years old, not a teenager. And even till today, the Jewish people understand that Isaac was actually a young adult, a young man. So Isaac uh, willingly went on the altar of sacrifice. Maybe Jesus talked about Genesis, uh, Psalm chapter 2, the Psalm of Coronation, or Psalm 22, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Or definitely he would have talked about Isaiah chapter 53, the fourth servant song, and that servant actually is Jesus Christ himself and his death on the cross. Today was definitely not the last day of Jesus on earth, according to that passage. Why? Because we know in Matthew chapter 28, Jesus went to Galilee. In Acts chapter 1 verse 3, the Bible tells us that Jesus spent 40 days before he ascended to heaven. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 6, that Jesus appeared to 500 brethren at one time. Let's conclude with some practical application for today. Our church theme, which some of us may have already forgotten, is to discipline ourselves so as to disciple others. Reading and studying God's Word is definitely spiritual discipline. I wonder how many of us say, MCO is boring, put up your hands. Now, praise the Lord that God has given us MCO. Now, do you know it's about 90 days since MCO first started? I believe that during this time of MCO or CMCO, we have more than ample time to spend in prayer and the study of God's Word. Secondly, we find that our cell groups and discipleship groups, our ABC classes that continue on, and any online class offered through the internet, they all must have the element of studying God's Word. And secondly, applying God's Word in our lives. 
Remember that Jesus spent three years with his disciples. Jesus taught them. He taught them through parables and other means. But Jesus also gave them on-the-job training. Thirdly, I want to talk a little bit about the Bible quiz that I have already done and am still doing. Now, as I was studying the Bible more, I realized that the blessing needs to be passed on to others. And so I remember last year when I was on holiday, I bought this Bible. It was very cheap. It's probably about five or six ringgit. Uh, it's paperback. But you know, it also encouraged and motivated me to actually uh, underline important words in the scripture, uh, to circle words. And uh, in Mark's gospel, nearly all the pages have circles and underline because these are important truths of God's word. Now, after doing all this, I felt it's good to actually do a Bible quiz. It is simple. It is only to answer true or false. But you know I'm a little bit tricky, so the questions may not be so straightforward. And so I devised uh, two Bible quizzes, each for each section. Quiz A and Quiz B is uh, based on Mark's Gospel, chapters 1 to 5. Quiz C and Quiz D, Mark chapter 6 to 10. And Quiz E and Quiz F, uh, Mark chapter 11 to 16. Now, I have yet to complete uh, doing uh, quiz D, E and F. But I want to encourage you, uh, particularly if you are leaders of the church, uh, please get in touch with me for quiz A, B and C. And if you need to know more details, whether you're a member or leader, please WhatsApp me directly. My last point for today is this, that we need to be a role model to our children. Now, as we know, monkey see, monkey do. Whatever we as parents are passionate about, highly likely our children, when they grow up, they will also be passionate in those areas. For example, in the secular world, we may be passionate about sports, for example, and our children will pick it up. My dad was so interested in sports and today I am interested in sports as well. And so my dear friends, if we are really passionate about God's Word and we desire to study God's Word more and talk about it in our family, we do the Bible story readings with our children when they are young, we help them understand the Scriptures by answering their questions or by studying the scriptures together. We don't have to publicize very much, but our children will indeed pick it up that we are passionate for God's word. And when they grow up, they would also desire to study God's word more and more. My dear friends, I notice that our children, as they grow up, some of them are so fascinated with many, many things. But I wonder how many of them are really fascinated and captivated by God's Word. I thank the Lord that even for this Bible quiz, there are some parents that say that their children also want to do the quiz, sometimes on their own, sometimes together with their parents. And all this is greatly to be encouraged. Let us come before the Lord today. Lord, we want to thank you again, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that there are no shortcuts to understanding your word. If it involves hard work, then so be it, Lord. Lord, we do not want to be like the man who just opened the Bible and pointed to verses and used those verses to direct his life. But in the end of the day, Lord, uh, hardly anything happened to him. Today, Lord, as we come to your table, as we enjoy the meal that you have set before us, we continue to pray, Lord, and you speak into our hearts. Lord, even as we eat the bread and drink of the cup, Lord, may we remember, Lord Jesus, that you have given us a mission, a mission to live our lives holy and pleasing unto you and to spread the good news of Jesus Christ, to be witnesses for you. 
and to make disciples of other people. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name.